our show of the year. And what you're going to see tonight is a selection of BK's finest sketch, sketches from our past. And you're also going to see our five new newbies. So watch out for Yasnil, Yuval, Andrew, Ayelet, and Jordan. So also please turn your cell phones off. If your cell phone does ring, uh, Emily Duggan has been instructed to pick you up and throw you off the SEC balcony. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if there's a fire, you should probably leave. Um, so without further ado, I give you the BKU Chit Show. <laughs> Chilling with my honeys. <laughs> Ignorant infidels. Can you not yet see the insignificance of your thoughts? The world is as a newborn, thrust from the loins of Jesus. Cast off your sins and give yourself to Jesus. He will let you suckle on the bosom of Jesus in love. Dude, you're not gonna be able to get any girls in this class. Dude, like, I know. What's up with this intro to intensive business research class anyway? Well, well, school feels we need adequate preparation via experiential learning models in order for us to be released into, in layman's terms, the real world. <laughs> Hello, class. Hello, oh, no. no principal. We are not I got a bit of news for you guys. The board over the course of the summer made a bit of a decision, and instead of the ordinary business class, we're going to have a sexual education class instead. What do you guys think? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the board has decided that since you guys aren't going to accomplish anything in life anyway, we may as well teach you guys how to reproduce. <laughs> creation, the sanctification of life unto its innermost parts. Yo, I can show you none of my innermost parts. Uh, great, 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 great. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you the professor who will be teaching you for now, today, tomorrow, the next day, and the whole year long, ladies and gentlemen, Woo. Professor Phelps. <laughs> Enjoy her class. Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> Enjoy her class, class. <laughs> Hello, class. It is such a pleasure to meet all of you. Pleasure to meet you, Mademoiselle. I thought we would begin by going over the syllabus. I titled it... Sex and all of us! Exactly. <laughs> sex and all of us. This is not a class about how sex affects you, but how it affects our entire society. Sex is a sin worthy of the condemnation of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Cast off your sins and give yourself to Jesus. <laughs> Over. 
up in your immunizations. So, <laughs> since you haven't had a physical in a while, I just wanted to run a few routine tests. If that's alright with you, good. Okay, so, follow my finger with your eyes. Okay? This finger right here. Got it? This finger. Not this finger, this finger. Okay, over here, over there. Up, down. Just use your eyes, sir. And then a circle. And then a circle. Okay. <laughs> Eye test, not mouth test. <laughs> Oh, back your head, you can't see, can you? <laughs> gotcha! It's okay, I'm a doctor. Just <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what I mean, sir? Excuse me? No! Beans? Beans? Musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you My food. diet is fine, thank you! Lower your cholesterol? Great. <laughs> uh, one more test. Uh, sir, could you please uh, put your palm in front of your face? No. <laughs> what exactly is that supposed to test? Sir, everybody knows if your hand is bigger than your face, you have cancer. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> All right. Sorry to have to tell you this, sir, but that lab work you had done a few months ago came back. You have syphilis. What? Everywhere. It's over? 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 Banana, sir. Ah, uh, yeah, thanks. Never speak about that ever again! You're right, you're right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's no, it's totally different. Look, it's even got her name and a picture of her on the front. Oh yeah. that doesn't suck. In fact, it's it's totally awesome! Like, listen to this, my, my favorite part here. 
And so I twist my heart round and bend, so that the bad is on the inside and the good on the outside. And I keep on trying to find a way of becoming what I could be, and I would so like to be, if there were no other people living in the world. <laughs> Isn't that the sexiest thing you've ever heard? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Plus. No. Plus, like she's totally got this attic or whatever where we could go and make out. <laughs> Parties and stuff up there, and the best part is that no one would ever find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first I need to find out where she lives. Well, are there any clues? Well, I mean, like, I, I, I looked her up on Facebook, right? Yeah. But there are like six million Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is. <laughs> or the wounds which they have caused. I couldn't bear their sympathy or their kind-hearted jokes. It would only make me want to scream all the more. That's powerful. What does that mean? <laughs> Seventy-second, and these 
We're having to stay for the last month in a sleeping bag with a cat named Rags. Well, that sounds better to me. We could set up a sleeping bag and... No, Mom, it's fine. I mean, if we had sex in the bathroom on the airplane, I'm sure we can have sex in my room with you two in the house. No, we'll be quiet. You won't even know. So, let's go get that luggage. No, Daddy, there's no luggage. Honey. What are you talking about? We got you that nice set of Samsonite luggage and all you have with you is a bag for the whole month? Where's all of your stuff? We sold it at the airport for Ben's ticket. What? We sold it. You what? Honey, that was your graduation present? You'd rather I come home with luggage than true love? You met at a Starbucks in the airport! <laughs> true love knows no bounds, Daddy. <laughs> Honey, Emily. I understand that you and Ben feel like you're in love, but your luggage, honey? I think we need to have a talk. Uh, ben, why don't you and Arthur go and get some coffee? Hey, Ben. Come over here. There's a, there's a Starbucks over here. We could go over there and you can tell me all about how you and my daughter met and how you deflowered her on the plane after abusing her kindness and making her sell all of her worldly possessions for your plane ticket. <laughs> I'll buy you a croissant. <laughs> Bye, Ben. Bye. Honey, Emily, let's talk. Okay. This is news to me, this Ben thing. I mean, we just met, and it was everything was so perfect. Aren't you a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, you know, you wear boots, and you listen, <laughs> you listen to Annie DeFranco, and you play rugby. <laughs> I don't know a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, no, I'm not a lesbian. Are you sure? Because you know that'd be okay, honey. <laughs> really, Mom, I'm not a lesbian. Sure. <laughs> honey... That's okay, your father and I have discussed this. Really, we accept you. <laughs> Jesus, Mom, I'm not a lesbian. Do you want me to be a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> well, Gladys's daughter has that mental disorder, and Janine's son is in a cult. And Irma's twins do porn! I can be accepting, too. Look, everyone, everyone, yeah, look, this is my lesbian daughter, and I love her. She's a lesbian. I love her for who she is. Look, I accept you for who you are. You can be honest with me. Mom, I'm not a lesbian. I like men. Sure you do. <laughs> when you're ready to be honest with yourself and the rest of the family, we're here for you. And guess what? Sandy's daughter is just your type, honey. Mom. I do not have a type. I am not a lesbian. <coughs> Sandy's daughter? Amy? Hmm? She's like a weird overbite thing and it's kind of strange. No, really though, Mom. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I am not a lesbian. Okay, honey. Well, then let's go find your father and Ben. <coughs> Hi, Daddy. Where's Ben? He, uh met some girl in line at the Starbucks, <laughs> mentioned something about true love. He told me to tell you that it was good while it lasted. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> That's okay. He did have back hair. It was kind of gross. Oh, well then let's go, honey. Your little brother's in the car. We forgot to crack the window. <laughs>
to do tonight? I don't know. Christ, this town is really fucking boring. I know! <laughs> we can execute our classmates! <laughs> now that George Bush is president, I can acquire a gun in under 20 minutes, despite my history of dementia <laughs> and armed assault. <laughs> Tim? That is so... 1998. Next, you'll be listening to Smash Mouth and wearing capris. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could play life. The little game with the cars and the peg people? <laughs> Go row up, Tim. We're not six anymore. That's right, you're not. <laughs> Who the hell are you? You know, today's disaffected teens aren't what they used to be. They demand a game that offers sophistication, complexity, and a hearty dose of angst. What are you doing in my basement? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we here at Parker Brothers bring you life! The game of life updated for your team. <laughs> about how drunk I was last night. We all knew winning, which I landed on being a fat kid and we started. <laughs> With life! Duh. The fun doesn't end until you get bored. Life does for entertainment purposes only. The Parker Brothers Corporation is not liable for any depression, suicide, or crappy poetry that may result. <laughs> Parker Brothers would like to remind you to play this game safely and that no, no one understands you.
No, it's okay. My birthday will be here any minute now. It's our anniversary. Are you sure you don't want something? No, my boyfriend will be here. Okay. It's our anniversary. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Singing telegram for Miss Sally. 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 Woo! That's me. <laughs> A telegram from Jeff. Well, Sally, we've been going out for two years to this day. And ever since the first time, well, I've always felt this way. I've never been aroused by you, and I don't think I'm gay. But that's why we're breaking up. I never loved you ever. Snack. 
that. <laughs> As we all know, the current playground captain declared war on homework, and then he declared war on math, which was a very unpopular decision. Jeannie, your views on the war have been a little bit unclear. Could you please elaborate? <laughs> yes. Thank you for that question. <laughs> We also underestimated the strength of multiplication and the difficulty of waging long division. But I also believe that we can still win and make sure that this war on math as part of the greater war on homework can succeed. <laughs> You've been opposed to the war from the start. That's correct. I think there are other subjects that threaten us, like English, social studies, finger painting. <laughs> I was opposed to the war on math from the very start because I knew it was a war of choice in which the sides were negative and the girls unequal. <laughs> we need all the different fractions to stop fighting. If we win this war, we're losing them. Ladies and gentlemen, your closing seven word statements. Three cookies for during school about Jeannie. And can I wait that those were cow? Yes. <laughs> Freeze! Give me all your money! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, so today, um, Boris's Kitchen is going to try something new. <laughs> Serial killer. Oh, I got it, I got it. You're going to be Harvey the Rabbit from the 1950s version of the film with Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> okay, can we get one for Pete? I need everyone to participate. Please. Serial killer. Got it. Um, all the presidents. All the presidents from 1936 to 1968 trapped on an airplane on watch. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, alright. Can we get one for me? Come on. Come on. Secretly, secretly the devil. Okay. Wait, I got it. Okay. I'm McCavity from Cats. So, we need to call our little friend Kaba. So, I want 
everybody to yell with me. Everyone yell Boris on the count of three. One, two, three. Boris! <laughs> okay, I have everything I need for my party, my beer keg, and my potato chips, and six left shoes, which is everything I need for my Dr. Zhivago party. I guess all I need now are wow. some guests. That's a reference. <laughs> okay! Ding dong. Come on in! How are you? Are you here? Okay, another guest? Ding dong. Hi, come on in! I dare say my eight point plan will. I am not a cook. <laughs> Once I dated an astronaut, 
But he kept taking small steps towards men, if you know what I mean. He's really great down, you One time I dated an astronaut, and it was as hot as a binary sun. Oh, no. <laughs> mailbox of one Jessica O'Neill, despite having been witness to our most lavish wedding the Thursday prior, <laughs> on the basketball courts during recess. Do you deny it? I stand by my actions. <laughs> Jessica is a stunning vision with her Lisa Frank binders. <laughs> and you, sir, are not only a do-do head of the highest caliber, but also a tattletale, a crybaby, and I would even assert infested with the most virulent strain of cooties. <laughs> Reginald! Reginald! <laughs> I challenge you <laughs> to a duel! <laughs> Very well then. <laughs> the flagpole. Recess. The weapon? Dodgeball. Uh, My favorite kind of balls. Excellent. 
<laughs> I shall see you there. The flagpole. The flagpole. <laughs> the door. Present your dodgeballs for inspection, please. my thirst for sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we will be selling the Triton or Power Swift Vacuum Cleaner. I implore you, audience, examine its soft curves. <laughs> Drink it in. <laughs> the Triton 4 Power Swift Vacuum Cleaner is truly a breathtaking machine. <laughs> I must say, Priscilla, if ever there was a hunk of plastic brought of human hands that could encapsulate a soul, 
it would be the Triton Four Power Swift Vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Putnam, so true. <gasps> but soft, fair beauty seems to speak. Oh, it whispers words of wisdom into mine ear, Priscilla. Oh, it, it would seem that the Triton Four Power Swift Vacuum Cleaner is not only incredible at tearing messes asunder, but. <laughs> Grow any 